It's that time of the week again here in Dallas. The 5-10-25 game is running on a Tuesday. I hop in for $5,000 and first hand of the night. We look down at the beautiful ace jack of clubs. I start off with a raise here to $150. We're going to get called by a few players, meaning we are going multi-way to a flop. The flop comes king for deuce with one club. I have an over card and a backdoor straight draw and a backdoor club draw. I decided to start with a check multi-way here and Randy, AKA three coin decides to go for a bet to $175. After JD decides to put in the call, not exactly sure what Randy has. JD might have a king or maybe a hand like 3-5 considering he is under the gun in the straddle position. Either way though, I think I should be folding here and sometimes I could be raising. I don't think calling is the best play. My logic in the moment was I have an overcard and a few backdoor ideas. I decided to put in the call here, bringing us off to the turn which gives me some showdown value now with a jack. Although I don't really think uh, I'm good in this spot, either JD or 3Coin probably has me beat. When the action checks over to Randy once again, he goes for a bet of 325 this time, and JD puts in the call once again. Now I think he for sure has a king. I think folding is probably the best play once again, but we're on a live stream, I made a pair, and if I spike another jack or even an ace, I'll probably have the best hand and I can scoop this one in. I put in the call and that brings us off to the river, which doesn't help anything, but it brings in the front door straight draw with the six of diamonds. Action checks all the way over to Randy once again. And uh, if he checks behind, I might have the best hand, although JD probably has a king. But instead, Randy goes for a bet. And uh, this is kind of interesting because he might not have any showdown value at this point and is trying to bluff us off of it. 1.2K is the price, and JD thinks about it for a while. And I mean a while. At this point, I'm thinking he has a king. He does ultimately fold king-queen offsuit. The action's on me. Can I make a call here? What does three coin have? Does he have a set? Does he have two pair? Does he have some busted sort of draw? I decide to fold my cards. I think it's a good fold. Until he shows ace three offsuit. JD folded the best hand. I could have picked up this pot being in position on him, but instead Randy getting that one through there with the ace high. All right, next hand, I look down at king queen offsuit from the big blind. I decide to raise it up over a few limps. 125 is the price I'll have to put in. And uh, Randy and Ice both put in the call. We are going three ways to the flop, which gives me top pair on a king jack six board. And being out of position against two opponents, I like either betting or checking. I decide to go for a bet of 175. Randy puts in the call. He could have any assortment of hands. And Ice puts in the call as well. The draws that they would have here consist of queen 10. They could have any sort of backdoor flush draw. But I have the queen of hearts in my hand. So it's interesting that both players decide to call. Maybe they have a weak king. Maybe they have a strong jack. Who knows, they both put in the call and we are off to the turn which comes the ace of hearts. I really like a check here. I have some showdown value and I would be going into a check call mode. That's what I decided to do. Three coin checks it over to ice who now goes for a bet. Does he have an ace? Does he have two pair like king jack? Could he have a set of sixes? My hand is definitely too strong to fold. I put in the call. Three coin gets out of the way. River doesn't change anything. It comes the eight of hearts. I check it over to Ice once again, who checks behind. I don't know what I would have done there if he goes for a hefty bet. He turns over Jack-9 offsuit for a pair of Jacks, trying to take it down on the turn. I'm stubborn and sticky, say that three times fast, and put in the collar and win myself a nice $1,700 pot. This next hand, JD opens the hijack to 150. I decide to three bet to a standard sizing of 450 with the beautiful Ace Queen of Hearts. And GTO Lizard now is in the tank. Is he gonna come in for a four bet? Is he going to just call or fold? He decides to put in the call. Obviously in real time, I have no idea what he has, but I think uh, four betting or folding is definitely the move here. Probably do not want to be calling out of the small blind. That's what he decides to do, which uh, stumps JD here, but he's not going anywhere. Puts in the call. Just like that, the three amigos off to a flop, which I absolutely smashed, top of my range, ace king six with one heart. Action checks over to me, and there aren't gonna be too many turn cards that I'm scared of, and the reason why I say that is because even though I have top pair here with a great kicker, 
I think you could also go for a check in the spot, not really scared of too much. You also could be betting small here, which is what I decided to do for $550. GTO Lizard decides to put in the call. Does he have pocket kings? I think it's unlikely because I think he would have four bet that pre. Does he have sixes? That could make a little bit of amount of sense. Ace king is out of the books as well. King queen? I'm not too sure, but he puts in the call there and uh, JD decides to fold his cards. You can see that he had king queen of clubs. Surprisingly, he did not go for another raise preflop. He might have been stumped by GTO's lizard's uh, cold call there from the small blind. Either way, we're off to the turn, which comes the three of diamonds, bringing in the backdoor diamond draw. Lizard checks it over to me, and now I like a sizing around 1,900. You want to go around two-thirds to three-quarters in this spot. Just charge everything, try to pile money in and get it in by the river. I decide to go for a sizing of 1,600, which I think is just a little bit too small. And uh, GTO Lizard agrees with that and shoves it in my face. Before I expose what GTO Lizard had in this hand, think about it. What would you guys do in this spot? We're at the top of our range. I think folding is out of the question, which means I put in the call. But at the same time, what is he representing here? I don't think he has aces, kings, or ace, king. That leaves him with a6 suited or maybe a hand like pocket sixes. Either way, it's a weird line. You can see though, when I put in the call, he turns over ace four of diamonds. So top pair in a diamond draw. We are running this two times and I'm gonna win this two out of every three times. So in a good spot here in this $10,000 pot. First river comes clean and the second one does as well. Both halves of the pot being shipped over my way. An 11K pot straight out of the gate here. Let's freaking go. I raise this next one up here from the hijack with ace 10 of clubs. Three coins putting in the call. AJ does as well. And uh, yeah, we are going multi-way here to a flop, which gives me two overs and the front door nut flush draw. And I decide to check it out of position here to three coin who goes for a bet. After AJ relinquishes his cards, uh, check raising and check calling are the two options, but I heavily prefer check calling here. If I had a hand like ace three of clubs, might want to go for a check raise, but ace 10 here, just going to be calling and we see a nice card on the turn. It comes the five of spades. Checking it over to three coin once again, who checks behind. I think with a lot of his made hands and some of his stronger draws, he'd want to continue betting on the turn. So interesting that he decided to check behind on the turn. Still, that brings in the four of diamonds on the river. Unfortunately, we could not get there. Not going to bet into three coin. He could have any assortment of one, two pair or sets. I check it over to him and now he goes for a small bet of $350. Interesting spot here. I think ace 10 of clubs is a great hand to call a lot of his bluffs with. He could have hands like king queen, jack 10, 9 10, stuff like that. And he could also have some busted club draws as well. I put in the call and let's see what he has. 10 9 offsuit. Look at that. We're going to take down that $1,500 pot with my ace high. And uh, yeah, I'm capable of making some of these plays now. Put it in the repertoire and uh, going forward. Try not to bluff me because I'm going to get a little sticky and call down. We get rewarded by the poker gods with my favorite hand in this next one from the plus two position. I raise it up to 150 and uh, almost half the table wants to put in the call here, leading us off multi-way to a flop, which comes 10, 8, 6 with two spades. I have the seven of spades in my hand. Action checks through on the flop multi-way, giving me the straight on the turn. Bang! And we also turn the straight flush draw. After it checks over to me, I think I make an atrocious bet size here and bet around the size of the pot. Really would have preferred to have a $150 to $200 bet. My logic was just bet large here, try to get value from two pairs and sets. I think a lot of those would have bet out on the flop. So definitely way too large here and everybody folds so I don't get the maximum in this one. Next one is a fun one. The $50 straddles on a few callers over to me and I raise it up to 275 with ace jack of spades. AJ puts in the call and Benham puts in the call as well. At this point, I'm putting them on some suited connectors, some pocket pairs, and uh, maybe hands like ace 10, ace nine suited. Either way, we see a flop which comes 10, nine, six. Bang, we flop the nut flush. It's not the nuts on this board. Seven, eight of spades would be that. The action checks over to me. There's 915 in the middle and I decide to go for a sizing of around one third and AJ puts in the call. 
Venom gets out of the way, and uh, when AJ calls here, he could have a set, but I think that would want to check raise the flop. He might have a hand like ace-10, ace-9. Maybe he has a hand like 10-7 or 10-8 for a pair plus straight draw. Either way, we see an interesting card on the turn. It brings in the fourth spade. Hopefully this did not just kill my action. It comes the seven of spades. AJ checks it over to me for a second time, and I think this is a spot to go for a check back. I pretty much have the nuts on this board, and in case he has the eight of spades, want to check behind here. Also, if he doesn't have a flush, the only way I'm going to get more value is if I check behind on this turn and then bet small on the river. So yeah, don't like my bet sizing here of $700. And uh, you can see AJ has eight, seven of clubs. He's thinking about it. And then folds face up. What a disaster turn. We probably would have gotten a lot more in. There were three spades on board, so he probably was a little bit nervous of a flush. But then we could have played a 5 or 10k pot here if there's no spade on the turn. So the poker gods gave me a gift on the flop, but then took it away on the turn, leading us into one of the biggest hands of the night. We're heads up in the nit game for $150 a pop. So if we lose this here, it's around $1,200. Definitely don't want to be in that spot. But uh, yeah, we got ourselves in this spot here. Me and Benham, two to my right, have the nit buttons in front of us, but uh, no fear. I look down ace king of diamonds from the low jack and over the $50 straddle, I just say, let's make it seven times that amount for $350. Ice decides to put in the cold call here from the button. I'm not exactly sure what he has. Does he have a pocket pair, suited connector? Who knows? But Benji is a capable player, and this kind of looks like a squeeze. He raises it up to 18 hundred dollars oh boy this could get messy here does benji just think that i am raising light trying to get rid of my knit button little does he know i have ace king of diamonds after aj and jd get out of the way actions over to benham and he has the knit button as well and decides to go all in he probably figures he doesn't want me and benji to go uh, all into a flop and uh, if I win, Benham's going to have to pay out 1200 bucks. So he wants to get in there. He might have some pocket pairs. Maybe hand like ace, queen, queen, jack, king, queen, stuff like that. Actions back over to me. So yeah, I opened it up to 350. Benji makes it 1.8. Benham to 4K. Actions back over to me. I'm not really too scared of ice when he just cold calls instead of three betting. So that means I'm going to go all in for 14.6K. Ice does get out of the way. You can see he had king seven of hearts. Actions on Benji. Who decides to call with pocket jacks? And uh, let's finally see what Benham decided to put it in with. Are you kidding me? Pocket aces? How do we go pocket aces versus ace king with two left in the knit game? I'm in a gross spot. Only going to win this one out of every 10 times. Benji has the jiggities. We're going to run this two times, but the only board that counts for the knit game, which is uh, really what I care about here, is the top board. No fear, the flop is here. It comes 10, 7, 3 with two diamonds. Oh man, are we gonna be able to win the top board? Come on, dealer, diamond on the turn, let's go. Oh, it's a board pairing 10, it doesn't help us. We really want to see a diamond, but I'll also take an ace to win the side pot versus Benji. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, are you kidding me? The river comes another 10, sealing our fate. Benji's winning the side pot on the first one. And Benham's winning the main pot. All right, second board. Can I at least win half of this? We need to see a good flop. And a good flop we get. 976 with two diamonds. Unfortunately, we have burned two of the diamonds on the first board. But uh, I will take another diamond here, of course. The turn is no help. Once again, are we about to go brick, brick on both turns and both rivers? Yes, we are. The three of hearts on the second board's river. And just like that, we are losing that huge pot, massive pot. Also getting rid of his nit button. So Wolfgang is going to have to pay this off to both players and then pay out the nit button game, or the nit game. <laughs> oh, brutal. An insult to injury. The announcer says it. We also have to pay out the nit game. So imagine losing a huge pot with ace king of diamonds only to also have to pay out the nit game. How gross is that? All right, few hands to go here. I look down at pocket aces from the hijack. Can I win some of it back? I'm only up 4K at this point after being up over 10 to start the session. I make it 150 and look at that. Benji comes in for a three bet to $600. Actions back over to me. Benji only has around 3.8K in his stack. I obviously have him covered. I wanna go for a four bet and I like a small sizing here of around 13 to 1400. So of course, I actually go a little bit larger to 1600. The reason why I like a small sizing is because I want Benji to be able to bluff shove a five bet if he has a bluff 
five bedding range. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger here to 1.6. It makes it harder for him to do so. But uh, yeah, he decides to stuff it in my face. It's a five bet jam for 3.8K and the action's back over to me. Why haven't I decided to put in the money yet? Am I uh, slow rolling Benji here? Uh, for context, I do know Benji. I play about two to three times a week with him at other properties in Dallas. But no, this is not a slow roll as much as you guys probably would have liked to seen that. That would have been pretty funny. Instead, they got my graphics wrong. So yeah, let's turn over Benji's hand. Ace five of clubs. So yeah, what exactly do I have in this hand? We're gonna have to go to the uh, table footage from above to see that I do in fact have ace king. So yeah, they got the graphics wrong here at TCH. I have ace king versus ace five in a great spot to get all of Benji's chips. We're gonna run it two times and the first board comes clean. Second board gives us a little bit of a scare with two clubs on the flop. But if I know anything about two uh, suits on the flop, it means the turn and river are both gonna be bricks. Sure enough, that's what happens here. This dealer does not want to give anyone a flush. Just like that, we're taking in that $7,500 pot after kind of a funny moment of uh, not having pocket aces. Side note, I got a few DMs after this session from a bunch of people here in Dallas saying how funny it was in the moment when they thought I was uh, slow rolling Benji. In the future though, I might have to incorporate that into my game. Benji's a funny dude and I know he can take a uh, beat like that. All right, two hands ago here, I looked down at 10, eight of clubs and I decided just to limp in for $50. That was the straddle. I think I also could be raising here, but if I know everyone is just calling instead of raising, limping here, getting my VPIP up with a nice suited one gapper, can't be the worst play in the world. It's also not too bad when you flop yourself a pair, a straight draw and a front door flush draw with the straight flush free draw, nine, eight, six with two clubs. Action checks over to me and I'm trying to build the size of this pot. So I bet out for 125. Randy puts in the call. He's the only one to do so and we're off the turn, which doesn't improve me in the slightest. It comes the three of hearts. Continuing to bet here, I fire out for 300. Randy calls once again. At this point, I don't really think I have the best hand, but I do have a lot of outs and I get one of them on the river. It comes a seven of hearts. In the moment, I thought I knew the exact bet sizing that I wanted to do, and that was a massive overbet of $1,700. My logic in the moment was just go for the maximum. If he has a set or two pair, he'll pay me off. But uh, I actually talked with my poker coach, Alvin, and he likes a way less sizing of around $400. He didn't think that two pairs could call me on this river, and sets would have announced themselves on the flop or the turn. Definitely respect his opinion and coaching. There is a link down below to our training course we made together. And yeah, sometimes though, I deviate from uh, what the proper bet sizing is, and that's indicative here. I bet $1,700 with what I think is the best hand nine times out of 10. Randy Snap calls me. He snap calls. Are we chopping here? Does he have a hand like 10 jack somehow? Nope. He has 7-8 offsuit for the river two pair. And we are going to get the absolute maximum there. $4,500 pot coming over my way. Just like that, we're up 10K on the session, leading us into the last hand of the night. It's going to be against Benji. I have the $100 straddle on. Ice puts in the call once again. You've been seeing him do that a few times in the session. Instead of three betting, he's just calling. DeBenji makes it 500. I'm not gonna let my straddle go that easily. I defend it. Off to a flop we go, which comes king six three with two clubs. I check it over to Benji, I'm out of position. I expect him to go for a one third pot size bet and he makes it $400. There's some draws out there. He could have ace four, ace five. You've seen he's capable of three betting me with that anyways. So yeah, definitely in his range. He bets 400, I have a pair. That's hard to make. I put in the call and we see a bad card on the turn. Another over card. He could have a hand like ace queen now and be beating us. The queen of diamonds peels off. I check it over to him for a second time. And after he goes for an overbet here of 3K into the 2K pot, the jig is up. I have to relinquish my pocket eights. You can see he got one through here, although he had a ton of outs. Still gonna win this 32% of the time with his ace high flush draw. After that last hand of the live stream, we end up playing for another 30 minutes off stream. Played one other significant hand with Benji, but I didn't film it. And uh, yeah, let's bring it to the outro. All right, this is the most unhappy person who has just won $7,600. Yeah, I'm uh, slightly unhappy, even though I made a pretty good profit tonight. I should have been up just way more. I lost the mid game twice. And uh, maybe the first one I played a little tight. I could have raised in one spot or played a few more hands. But the second one, I was trying to get in there with a bunch of hands like P9 suited and six, seven off and eight, nine and stuff 
complete garbage. And when you play it for 150 a pop, that adds up. So I lost $2,400 in uh, profits there from that mid game, which is pretty stupid, but still booking a $7,600 win in around six hours. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. If you guys have any critiques on how I played, be sure to let me know down below. I'm gonna be playing a lot more fun sessions. I'm going down to the lodge this weekend. And then what else do I have planned? Yeah, we're running a live stream at Peaks on Friday. That's a 510. So pretty much for the next few weeks, I'm running this game on Tuesday. I'm running a Friday 510. And then on Saturday, the lodge 51025. A lot of fun stuff coming up. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you guys are new, which there's a lot of you because we just passed 700,000 followers because of shorts. Not buying any followers, it's all because of shorts. Quick little side note, if any of you guys want to play online with me, I play about two to three times a week on two different clubs. I'll put that link down below. Got to have the Telegram app to open it, but uh, you can catch me out there in the streets. My username is Wolfgang with a zero, not an O. As for now, good luck in the felt, you guys. Let's hope I get to my car safely with this $7,600 profit. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace! Okay.